Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. One observer says he thought he saw police in an MRAP. An MRAP is a mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle. It's built to withstand armor-piercing bombs. Uh, this is not something that we need in American communities. The police have all the power in that situation, and then they abuse their power, and there's no way to catch them doing it or fight back. You end up with a really uneven situation. So the militarization of the police has a really profound impact on the people. With the new technology, uh, uh, the way the criminals are, are a lot more sophisticated, the drug cartels. It's when they use those militarized weapons on our people. And so I know young people who um, have been chilling at home, right? They're playing video games with their friends. The cops barge in with like their assault rifles, right? Put, say, get on the floor, we're gonna kill you. And th there's that kind of, of, of violence that happens just by seeing those weapons, right? A single weaponry just doesn't do the job if you want to go home to your family at night and, and, and defend the people of the city. Right, uh, and then when they turn them on, our people for sure. People don't want to go to jail. I mean, it's as simple as that. They do not want to go to jail. And so I think that, that you know we do have harm in our communities. There is violence, there are problems, but adding more force, more guns, higher grade weapons isn't fixing it, right? You don't fix guns with more guns. It hasn't worked for the past however long we've had police, and it's not, I don't know why we would expect it to work better in the future. You got to keep in mind too that policemen never wrote one law in the books. Society wrote them through their legislatures and whatnot. We just enforce these laws. The other thing is that I think we have to get at that question of why do we have police? And if you get at that, if we look at the history of the police and we see how they grow out of, in the South, slave patrols, and in the North, pro, uh, uh, cracking down on immigrants and labor unions, we see that they have a function that is more about social control of black people and of, of low class, lower class working people. That's a big term out there, using necessary force to affect the arrest. Uh, are there idiots out there? There's idiots in every occupation. Uh, a young kid that got a badge, now he's a tough guy. Uh, these are guys that you knew about on the job and you just kept away from them. For me though, the honest thing is that it doesn't matter if they have an assault rifle or a, or a whip or a wooden baton to beat you with. They, they are a source of violence and any tool we give them will be used to inflict violence on our people. But when you're out there, it, it, it's really, really a game that if you lose your dad, if you lose your dad, if you go down and they take away your gun, you and another innocent person might be dead. So. And so it's an old logic, new technology. Time the city is investing really heavily in like surveillance technology. So it's often said that Chicago has the most surveillance cameras in the whole city. Um, they have a device called a Stingray device. So the Stingray device, basically, it's like a little box with a computer. And if you're in the right location, it will trick your cell phone into thinking that it's the tower, and then it can collect a lot of information. So like who you're talking to and numbers you punch into your phone and just a lot of data from your cell phone. Ferguson, police in these towns are getting much of this combat equipment free of charge from the Pentagon. The Defense Department says just in 2013, nearly $450 million worth of military equipment was given to law enforcement. There's no way we can appease society and say, I'm going put him to sleep, I'm not going to shoot him when you're dealing with, with you're being confronted with deadly force. And I, w I, I wish there was, and most policemen wish there were. I think what you know? part of the, the dangers of militarized weapons is they set our, our standards so high that we are willing to have electrocution <laughs> as like a viable, less deadly alternative no, force. I think it's very rare that you should ever be calling in the military to a domestic situation. and. Um, I think that when you call them in, like if we're going to be doing that in the future, we need some really serious regulations about how we do it, releasing information to the community, transparency, and making sure the results of those investigations can be monitored by the local community. 
So it's, it's not just a matter of like come in, do some military stuff and leave. You need to publish reports and release your documents and show exactly where you were, how you were spending your time and why. Like, are you monitoring protesters and their First Amendment rights, or are you really investigating criminal activity? You know, right now, the Chicago Police Department gets 40% of our city's operating budget. But cops have to buy their own guns. They have to buy their own bullets, their own uniforms, right? So they're having to pay for that. That's the mil If you're a soldier in a real war, you don't have to do that. And you have to go through how many months of training with those weapons? I don't think CPD gets the same training, right? We don't, we don't give require the same level of training as what we would if you were a soldier. But current and former police say criminals have increasingly more firepower, and law enforcement can't afford to be outgunned. If people are shooting at the police and committing looting and other violent acts, then the police need to protect themselves. The Defense Department supports this trend overall. While it would take you or me four to six weeks and unending hassle and documentation to secure a passport, as reported by the Washington Post, your local police force need only fill out a one-page form for an armored personnel carrier. Wherever you go and you take your smartphone, there are ways to track you. And we, we, we know already that the federal government is doing a lot of that, tracking where people are going and how they're using their cell phones. But it's kind of scary to think of your local police department being able to do the same thing because we don't have the same sort of oversight. And also there's a, a lot of ways that power can be abused and then it's hard to fight back against that abuse. Why aren't we piloting disarmament programs, right? So when we focus on, on militarized weapons, um, absolutely, they're horrible, they kill people, they're unnecessary, they're expensive, they're dangerous, all those things. And it, it changes, it, it limits our ability to have honest conversations around what force is justified. The thing that's proven to actually reduce violence is you give young people jobs. We, the That's studies are there. Yeah, yeah, like just give them a job. You don't need more guns. It's just, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. It's great. Okay.